بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن ولا. So I'm preparing a few notes for our class in the morning, uh, Tafsir class, and we're going over a passage in the fourth chapter, uh, Surah An-Nisa, uh, around the 88th verse. And actually this ties in very closely what I was saying in the last couple of videos about you know, the arguments about homosexuality and, you know, can a person be a Muslim man, be a homosexual and, 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 and how in many ways uh, these are people who are looking for a means to defeat the sovereignty and the authority that Allah has clearly uh, um, made apparent in his revelation that it is something uh, both the act and the desire are both uh, sinful and blameworthy. And yet, we see increasingly uh, Muslims feeling that they must, uh, you know, on one hand, they'll say, our religion doesn't allow this, which is weird because then it's like, when it's almost like they distance themselves from their religion. Our religion doesn't allow this. Okay, but are you following your religion? You're not really answering the question and being simple and direct. As Allah says, what? وَقُولُ قَوْلًا سَدِيدًا Right? Just... Speak a simple, straightforward word. Um, but in this passage, we find something interesting going on. Uh, and this shows some of the challenges of social ties. And so at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, the, uh, the companions of the Prophet, they had, um, they had close ties with people who were in reality... Munafiqun, people who were hypocrites. And so Allah says, for instance, in the 88th verse, Bismillahir Rahman Rahim, Famalakum fir munafiqina fataini wallahu arkasuhum bima kasabu. Right? Allah says, What and what is the matter with you that as it relates to the hypocrites, right? What's wrong with you that two groups should emerge out of you? What that the companions uh, may Allah be pleased with all of them they kind of split into two groups when it came to the affair and the topic of the munafiqin when Allah has already right, sent them back to their kufr right, on account of what they were doing do you actually seek to guide that whom Allah has led astray and that Allah says what and whomever that God so chooses to misguide you will never find a path of God for guidance for them now what's really interesting is that a Sa'di rahimahullah he goes into some explanation um, his uh, mashallah is really great Tafsir Tafsir al Karim Rahman, fi Tafsir al Manan. So, in his Tafsir, as Sa'adi mentioned something as it relates to this verse, and again, this will very much apply to what we see going on today. So, Allah says, "What? Famalakum? What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? Firmunafiqina fi'ataini. Right? That you could possibly." split into two groups regarding the hypocrites, right? And what this means is, one group of them were reluctant to fight against the hypocrites because they were like, oh no, they outwardly show their Islam, right? Uh, and yet another group from them were like, nah, we ain't buying it, it's pretty clear who they are, uh, and so we're going to fight them, right? And so we see in his... Uh, in his tafsir, he says that he says al murad bil munafiqin al madkura fi hadhi al ayah. Right? What is intend? What's the intended meaning here by the mentioning of these uh, munafiqin? He says al munafiqun al madhur. Right? That they are those who are uh, those who were apparent. Right? That they was outwardly they were showing. Uh, 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 al right? That these were people who were trying to show an outward semblance of Islam, but they really wasn't buying it. This is not unlike the people. Can a person be gay and a person be uh, and, and buy this? Meaning, what? Can a person either indulge in the act 
or not impugn even the desire, right? This is, uh, this is a major problem. And he continues by right. They were what al mudhirun islamahum. They were the ones that made it seem so. However, walam yuhajiru ma'a kufrihim. However, they didn't make hijrah. What? Because Allah gave the command to make hijrah. They didn't want to make hijrah. Allah gave the command. You know that atatun uh, rijal shahwatan min dun nisa. Right? Inna kum qawmun mufsirun. Right? Allah gave the command. Two men cannot approach each other uh, and, and have sex with one another, nor can they have the desire, right? So again, it's clear, it's straightforward. Um, and, and then yet at the same time, we see even at uh, the time of the Prophet Sallallahu the companions, uh, not on this particular topic of Qawm al-Huruf, right, but on the, uh, on the fact that they were even divided over whether they should go and uh, fight the hypocrites. And so he continues by mentioning, he says, وَكَانَ قَدَّ وَكَعَ بَيْنَ الصَّحَابَ رِضْوَانَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِمْ فِيهِمْ إِشْتِبَاهِ Right, and again, we find them fallen into to two groups. How is this? فَبَعَضُهُمْ تَحْرُجُ عَنْ قِطَارَهُمْ Part of them is because what? they One of them didn't want to fight them. One of them wanted to get out of having to fight them. وَتَغَعَ مَوَالَتِهِمْ Right? You know, because they had a relationship with them. They knew who they were. They came from the same place. And they said again, well, they have the outward appearance of being right, faithful. But, as Sa'adi says, And so he says that, ah, but the other group were like, nah, we ain't buying it. They are a bunch of hypocrites, and it's clear by their actions that they are hypocrites, and so they judged them, right? فَحَكَمَ بِكُفْرِهِمْ Now we love today to invoke this, uh, only Allah judges. This is a bunch of nonsense. Matter of fact, كَيْفَ uh, تَحْكُمُونَ As Allah asks, how are you not judging, right? Or how are you judging incorrectly? So, the, uh, the companions were split over this. One group were like, well, they kind of have the outward uh, trappings of uh, faith. The other group were like, no, nah, we ain't buying it. They didn't make hijrah. They're not really believers, and we're going to judge them, and we're going to, right, we're going to get at it with them. Now, why am I saying this? I'm saying because, again, due to social relations, sometimes it can confuse you as to what is the truth of a matter. Right, and so as Saadi continues, he says, "فَأَخْبَرَهُمْ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى أَنَّهُ لَا يَنْبَغِي لَكُمْ أَنْ تَشْتَبِهُ Right, فِيهِمْ وَلَا تَشَكُّ وَلَا تَشْكُ Right, so that he tell that he says, "What well, then?" Allah informed them, right? By this verse coming down, there can't be any argument here, right? There is no argument whatsoever. فَمَا لَكُمْ فِي الْمُنَافِقِينَ What's wrong with you, right? There, there, there's not two opinions that can be had here right, about the munafiqeen. Just as there cannot be two opinions that can be had about homosexuality, right? There, there, can, there, cannot, be any, there cannot be two acceptable opinions. Now, he says, بَلْ أَمْرُهُمْ وَادِحْ Right? بَلْ أَمْرُهُمْ وَادِحْ غَيْرِ مَشْكَلِ Meaning what? That when it came to this topic, it was clear who... It was clear who was in the right. The second party who deemed them right to be, uh, you know, the, the hypocrites that they were, right, and that they would indeed have to go and fight them. It was it was clear, right, and it was uh, and the understanding of that was what It was there was no mushki, mushka. There was no problem in understanding that. In the hum right? Without a doubt, they are definitely hypocrites. Uh, and as for these qawm uh, al-huruf, right, they, these are people who are they, these, these are, this is a despicable thing. They, they, it should be clear, right? Now, he says, uh, That is because what? They were unrepentant in the repeating of different acts of kufr. Right? So one way that the other group was able to come to a very clear, simple understanding that this is what the case is, right? That these are definitely, right, the munafiqun, that these are definitely the hypocrites. 
uh, is because of their flagrant uh, and repeated infractions against the command of Allah. So it became clear. Likewise, when we see from the LGBTQ lobby, what what do they want to do? They will, they want to remove any notion of it being sinful, and they want to indulge in it, as he says, what تَقَرُّ كُفْرُهُمْ Right, that they want to simply keep repeating it, repeating it, and repeating it. And this is why it's such a problem for us to be talking about people that we love. He says, what وَوَدُّ مَعَ ذَلِكَ كُفْرُكُمْ And what they really wanted was not only for the ability for them to do whatever it was that they were doing, whether we're talking about the case of the munafiqun, right, to do their nifaq, to do their hypocrisy, or not to make hijrah, or you know, not to follow the commands of Allah, or in the case of what we're dealing with today, what they would love for us to love them. They want us to love what they do. It's not enough that they go do it and you say, okay, whatever, man, you do your nasty work behind closed doors. No, they want you to actually become the advocates for it, not unlike the munafiqun, they wanted the sahaba to actually advocate for on behalf of them and to accept them into their fold as hypocrites uh, alongside people of genuine iman. And so he, the, 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 the imam says what? He says, what? En takunu mithlahum. They also want you to actually become just like them. Right? And this is why now when they made the little video that they took down right in San Francisco, we're coming for your kids, right? When it comes to Qawm al-Huruf, we're coming for your kids. When it comes to the issue of homosexuality, right? They're coming for your kids via Disney. They're coming for your kids via cartoons. They're coming for your kids via plastering, you know, these flags and all of this stuff everywhere. They're coming for our children, right? And so because they want us to be just like them. فَإِذَا تَحَقْتُمْ ذَلِكَ مِنْهُمْ However, that once you come to understand who they are, right? Once you really come to understand who they are, then the Imam quotes the verse, فَلَا تَتَّخِذُوا مِنْهُمْ أَوْلِيَا Do not take them as your guardians, your protectors, or your close confidants. فَهَذِيَا يَلْتَزِمُ عَدْمَا مَحَبَّتِهِمْ Right? And this, it necessitates that you cannot love them. Now, I just saw the other day where somebody was putting up, uh, I don't know, some, some Muslim group was talking about, well, you know, our religion doesn't allow it, but we have to love everybody. Are you out of your freaking mind, man? Um, no, you cannot love people of fahisha. You cannot love people of fisk. You cannot love people of uh, uh, who are musrifun. You cannot love people that are depraved. Right, um, and so it's interesting that we see this same challenge. Uh, you know, the same challenge that we see uh, facing the companions at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's the same thing that we have today. In their case back then, it was what the munafiqun. It was the hypocrites. For us today, it is the uh, homosexual, uh, 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 LGBTQ, qawm al huruf This whole thing, right? that uh, it's not sufficient that they just want to do what they want to do. They want you to come on board with it. They want your kids to come on board with it. They want you to advocate for it. And they want you to love it. And that's the plain truth of it. And again, if we were to take the time to actually study Revelation just a little bit, we will see... During this revelatory period, during this period of revelation for, you know, 23 years, that Allah created a situation and a scenario that covers every facet that will repeat again and reverberate, reverberate it, you know, throughout history until the end of time. And so, you know, we often feel uh, or, or, or under the misguided notion that, our situation today is so different and so unprecedented. But in fact, if we just would take a little bit of time to look in the Qur'an and to study the Qur'an, we would indeed see that this is not such an uh, exceptional... Um, I mean, sure, it's disgusting, but it's not all that unprecedented. And again, how could one group of the companions, how could they, you know, again, may Allah be pleased with them. 
as Imam Sa'adi says, right? How could they possibly, or rather, forget what as Allah says in the Quran, فَمَالَكُمْ فِي الْمُنَافِقِينَ فِيَتَيْنَ Right? How did they become duped? Well, they, they became confused. How did they make this mistake? Right? And I know some people are very, very uncomfortable for some reason of pointing out instances where the companions perhaps made a mistake I mean, number one, the companions are not ma'asum. They are not infallible. We do say, radiallahu anhum. May Allah indeed be pleased with all of them. And they are the best of us. They are the best generation. And we will not supersede them in faith and in deeds. That that is true, right? And, And we love them and we respect them. And we ask Allah to bless them. Um, at the same time, we should not be so reluctant that Allah is saying, when Allah says, فَمَالَكُمْ Well, who is He talking to? Who is the fa'tain? Who are the two groups? Who is the group that is, or rather, who is the one group that's split up into two? As-Sahaba. So I'm not sure why people get so incensed. Because when we are pointing this out, it's not pointing out like, oh, look at them. Not like some people today, oh my God, you know, وَنَعُودُ بِاللَّهِ Right, and, and, and you know, عَيْبْ عَلَيْهِمْ these people today that cast dispersions upon the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. This is not that. This is merely a studying an incident that happened during the time of revelation that bears a resemblance to what is going on today. And if that if the best generation, if a portion of them, due to perhaps no fault of their own, right, made a mistake. And we're like, ah, uh, well, you know, they have the outward trappings. Again, like the same thing, right? Can a person be Muslim and be gay? Well, if they have the outward trappings, right? If they have a beard, uh, if they pray, if they fast during the month of Ramadan, th- they will have these outward aspects of it. But this person who is flagrant in that lifestyle and is not repentant, right? Then this is, so I, that's why I said, you know, we have to be careful of simply allowing the the question to be put to us without examining, hmm, what is the agenda behind this questioning? What is it that's going on? And, and make no mistake, there is an agenda, right? There is definitely an agenda out there. Um, so again, this is from the uh, fourth chapter of the Quran, Surah An-Nisa, in the 88th verse. And I highly recommend that you uh, maybe take a few moments today or tomorrow, crack open your mushaf, read it, contemplate it. Um, Imam al-Sa'adi's tafsir is widely available. Uh, In fact, I think there's even, yes, there is, there is an English translation of it. Um, So that we can understand reality through revelation. Well, jazakumullah khairan, just wanted to uh, continue to further this conversation so that uh, we learn how to deal with realities that are presented to us and not always in such a hyper emotional reactionary way as you know for, for myself it's like this is not really a major thing as he said what amrahum wadih right the affair is straightforward and it's clear it's clear what's right it's clear what's wrong you know and uh, we should not again be afraid to disappoint people by telling them the truth وصلي وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين والحمد لله رب العالمين جزاكم الله خيرا السلام عليكم